you're never too young to get to grips with technology, and the early years are no exception. Today on a resource review, ICT Special, we'll be evaluating three ICT teaching aids for the early years that you might find useful in your classroom. They are a CD-ROM of maths games, a range of cross-curricular programmes on CD-ROM, and a recordable picture album. Recommending today's resources, we have Samina Rai, early years teacher from Ripple Infant School in Barking, which is an ICT testbed school. On the panel today is Nikki Wyman, phase leader reception year one at Engain Primary School in the London Borough of Havering. And we also have freelance education advisor Colin Hinson. Over in the test lab, our resident ICT investigator Matthew Tosh isn't too old to test out these early years products for us. Well, Samina, your first choice of resource for us today is the CD-ROM, MathBase 1. Tell us, what is it and why do you like it? Uh, this is a CD-ROM of maths activities, uh, which is used for consolidating any maths lessons within school. And what is it about it that you like? I like it because it is very simple to use. The uh, instructions are very simple to follow for young children and they don't need a teacher to be sat with them to actually go through the steps of the programme. I find that the children find the instructions on it very easy to follow. There's nothing complex on there for them to actually have to understand before they can use the programme. And it also gives them instant feedback on how successful they are in using the programme. And selecting a programme um, with numbers and spots to match to the numbers, so the children would click a number and then find the corresponding number of spots. If they make a mistake, they would hear this sound. Right, OK. And if they find the correct answer and click it, they would hear a different sound. And they would also disappear, which also shows that they've got that correct. Right, OK, so that's very easy. A teacher could go round and very easily pick up on... That's right. OK. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Now let's go over to see Matthew in the test lab, who's been adding up the pros and cons of MathBase 1 for us. When you first launch MathBase, you're presented with four programmes. The first three are pretty much the same, they all work the same, and I'm going to show you it now by looking at the number to 20. Now, essentially, you're presented with two matrices on the screen, and you've just got to match up the numbers between the two. So if I click on 10, and the word 10, you see my boxes disappear, and you keep doing that until they've all gone. You can change the range of numbers you're working with here in the yellow box. If I use left click, that increases it by one, and the right click, decreases it by one. Now, once you've mastered your quiz, you can click on the test button. It gives you another test, but this time you're against the clock and you can see the clock counting down there on the screen. Well, I want to show you the number to 100. You'll see the format on the screen is pretty much the same. We've got less numbers to work with. And you can actually change the format of the numbers. You can have tens, you can have fives, tally marks, or even Roman numerals to work with. But beware, the program will allow you to have the same format in both matrices, which might defeat the object of the quiz. Again, you can increase the range you're working with with the left hand button. And if you have the how many function, you've got to count all the squares. Imagine trying to do that against the clock. It might be a little bit challenging, that one. Well, the final quiz on here is the number bonds activity. Again, we've got our two matrices, but this time you've got to do a calculation and work out the answer. I can change the mathematical function, so I can click at the top here, we can go to multiplication, I can even change the level I'm working with. On the whole, I found this very quick to install and incredibly user-friendly. And now back to the panel. Well, Samina, MathBase is certainly colourful. Mm. But it's not very inspirational. I mean, is it just a little bit too simple, do you think, to really inspire children? Uh, I find it's uh, nice and colourful, so the children like the bright uh, primary colours. Uh, but it is being currently updated anyway, and they're in, in the process of changing the way it looks, the layout, etc. All right. <laughs> well, over here we have Nikki, who's actually tried out MathBase with your pupils in the classroom. How did you find it? I mean, I agree with Shamima that it was uh, a very user-friendly programme. The children were reasonably engaged with it. I found it most useful for sort of um, an end of unit or an end of teaching, sort of testing the children what they did and didn't know, because it would record their faults and they could work very independently. 
where I had reservations about it was in that it, it wasn't as um, interactive as perhaps I would have liked. Mm. Um, one of the aspects I particularly did like was that you can have some numbers on the screen and you can have an element here where it says count the sounds. Now this sort of eliminates the uh, necessity to get out your biscuit tin and, and your unifix and start dropping them in. And then you click on a number this side and then click on a, a question mark this side. Six, so that's clearly incorrect. Colin, what do you think? My instant thought was worthy but dull. Um, you know, that it, the, the intentions are very good and you can see that the purpose of this particular programme, but to be quite honest, with early years pupils, they, to, for them to stick at it for more than a sort of a minute, I should imagine, without losing any interest, without losing interest, yeah. is going to be quite a challenge. Just a final comment then from Samina, do you think that's a fair comment? Uh, it is a fair comment, but on the other hand, you've got to look at what it's also giving to the children in the classroom. For example, you have got learners who are more interested in computers, and they might, uh, you know, suit this program more than doing a worksheet right. to complete the same kind of tasks. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's all we've got time for on that particular one. Now let's go over to Samina's second choice of resource, and this is the Infant Video Toolkit 2. Samina, explain this resource to us. Uh, this is a CD-ROM with uh, a number of different options on it. It has got uh, to publish, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, to publish uh, offers a range of um, ideas on creating documents, and I find it's very easy for them to use because those children who find drawing very difficult can produce some really good results. If, we, if I click anywhere on the paper, it will bring up a magnifying glass and produce a pattern within the magnifying glass. And then I just click it anywhere and it will fill up the whole page. Well, thank you. Now time to go back to Matthew to see what he made of this resource. The Infant Video Toolkit 2 allows children to practice their word processing, numeracy and literacy skills in a hassle-free environment. The package comes with six programs, you can see them here on the screen. And I'm going to show you the Two Paint program, which, as the name would suggest, is a simple paint package. Well, you've got your window to work with here, and on the left-hand side you can see the tools, different thicknesses of pens and colours. Now, there's one thing I really like about this program, that's on the right-hand side of the screen, there's something that resembles a rope. And this is designed to help short people on an interactive whiteboard. You click, drag it down, and they can access the top of the screen. A lovely idea. Now I'm going to close this program down now and go into a desktop publishing program, it's to publish. Again it's got the paint facility but it will allow you to add text to pictures as well. You can change the format of the screen by going to new document and for advanced users you can right click and import pictures from your hard drive. There it is and I want to add some text to the right hand side so I'll just click and add my text. Now there are some teachers options and it allows you to switch on various toolbar buttons or switch them off because for young children sometimes less buttons is less confusing. There are a series of child friendly videos on here to help them get to grips with the packages. We're going to learn how to use to publish to do some simple writing and a quick picture. It's really child friendly and it will allow children and even some adults to practice their most basic computer skills. And now back to the panel. Well, Samina, Matthew showed us to paint, you showed us to publish, but there's actually a choice of six programmes here. Mm -hmm. Are they all equally good, do you think? I would say so. I have used uh, to go and to graph with children in year two, and they found that was a very, very successful programme for them to use as well. Right. Yeah. OK, well, let's see what Nikki used then. How, how did you find this result? Yeah, this programme is terrific. Much as the last one didn't float my boat very much, this one does the business on all levels, really. Just on the to publish, when you go to the new screen up here, the, um, this element is really good because they can draw their picture on the screen. Well, so. while you're drawing, let's get a comment from Colin. What do you think of Two Simple? Well, this is a perfect example of just how good this program is. You know, for me, uh, the, the Info Video Toolkit is, is perfect for ICT teaching because it covers so many aspects of ICT learning. And so it does do that data gathering, but also allows creativity, particularly this very simple drawing package. So any child can draw a picture of a dog or any adult if they're really pushed to it, <laughs> <laughs> like the one we have here. OK, great. Well, now let's move on to Samina's third choice of resource, something a bit different. It's actually a physical resource, 
a, a talking photo album. So explain this one to us. OK. Uh, this allows children to actually capture their work. Um, we can capture it on a digital camera, put the photos into this album, and then record what they have done. Okay, as so well. you put a, a, a paper, a hard copy of your picture mm -hmm. into it. That's right. And what we can do is take a picture, put it in the album, and record their voice. Uh, we've got a record function on each page, which is quite useful, because then you can have several in there, and then they can play it back to one another, and they can recall what they've done, how they did it, etc. Oh, and I've used this, so if you'd like to have a listen to this yeah. one. I have made a car ramp. And this girl's saying that she's made a car ramp, which if I had just shown her a picture, she may not remember what she had actually built because the young children quite often forget these things. So this helps to recall what they've done and it values their work as well. Is this really an ICT resource? I mean, it's got nothing to do with the computer. Well, ICT is not all about just computers. There's ICT everywhere around us. And this is an ICT piece of equipment. It's used for communicating ideas. Uh, it's, it's operated by batteries, but that doesn't mean that it can't do, you know, s you know some useful ICT development. Okay. Well, it's an intriguing little device there. What, what thoughts over here, Colin? Well, I loved it. I thought it was a really, really beautiful piece of equipment. I mean, clearly not designed for schools, but so it's a, it's a good piece of imaginative uh, <coughs> jump, if you like, from a commercial product to use in the classroom. Yeah. Uh, and I could see all sorts of possibilities for it, not just in terms of photographs, but drawings adding materials that you find on nature walks or something like that. It's great. Um, the only problem I, I had with it was the buttons are quite small. And so I can just imagine sort of three or four year olds having a bit of an issue sort of maneuvering it correctly so they could do the recording. Nikki, how did you find it in your classroom? Well, for me, I would have liked it to have been a little bigger so they could, so the children's own drawings would fit in there a little more easily. And although the cost isn't prohibitive, I think the children would like one of these each to be able to put a lot of their work in. And if you've got sort of a lot of children in your class, that, that the cost is, a, is, a, is an issue there. If you were going to use this in terms of having it as a class book, very often in reception we do things like I like my or favourite foods or favourite animals, then this would be an ideal resource for that. What I have found is that if you tell the children that they can use it if they behave, it's like a treat. <laughs> like and a it, it does work, it's a reward. <laughs> so and they really, really appeal to They do, to it. they do. And they treat it with respect because they know it's a, it's a special it's book. Right. It's not an ordinary book. OK, so yeah. it could last quite a long time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we looked at were MathBase 1 from MathBase, Infant Video Toolkit 2 from Too Simple Software Limited, and the Talking Photo Album from Liberator. For more information about the resources we've discussed, go to our website, that's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So I'd like to say a very big thank you to the panel, to Samina, to Nikki and to Colin. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>